Number 10, there you see a wee slice out of a circle question, a fractions of a circle question, what does it tell you? There's an angle of 65 degrees in that sector. The length of the arc is 28.4. Doesn't tell you the radius. So that means this question wants you to work out that radius. What's the length of the pendulum? Well, just set out the fractions that you know. The angle over 360 <coughs> is the same fraction as the arc over the circumference, which would be the same as the area of the sector over the whole circle, but we're not using that part. So filling that out, you've got 65 out of 360 is the same as 28.4 over the circumference, which you call pi d. So it's this part I don't know. Well, I know all the rest of the numbers, so just rearrange it to read d equals. So cross-multiplying, take d up to the top. That will leave the 28.4 and the pi behind. And I don't want them here, so cross-multiply them as well. Take the 65 down and the dividing 360 up. And then press the buttons. And you get an annoying 50 point and a little bit, 50.067. You tend to think it should just be like 50 and so on. But it says what's the length of the pendulum? So that would just be the radius of that circle then. So the radius will be a half of 50.067 and so on. Which turns out to be 25.067. 3 and so on. I think we could just round that off to 25.0 centimetres. So number 11. The area of this tabletop, which is a hexagon, so it's work out the area of this hexagon. And what it says is each of these diagonals has got length 40. Now they cut each other in half, so each half is 20. So the question really is, how do you work out the area of one of the triangles, because the hexagon is just six of those triangles. Now they're all equilateral triangles, because it must be 60 in the middle, because there's 360 degrees divided into six equal parts. They're also isosceles, which means that 60 away leaves 60 of the other two, so all the sides are 20, with a 60 degrees in between. So you've got two choices for working at that area. You can either just use that formula, half AB sine C, which is probably the quickest one to use here. There's no ABs or Cs, so I'll just put inverted commas. So it's a half of 20 times 20, times the sine of 60 for one of those triangles. So that's 173.205 and so on. Which means the area of the hexagon will be 6 times 173.205 and so on. But that of course is stored under answer, so I just do times 6. And I get 1039.23 etc. Then I check is it asking me at all for any particular accuracy? It just says what's the area. Or if I just take it to a whole number. 1039, because it's just a 2 there, centimetres squared. Now the alternative would have been to take that triangle and cut it in half. So you've got a right angle triangle. And then you could just use area of base times height. Because the base is easy, it's just 10. But you'd have to work out the height using Pythagoras. So that would have been four, 20 squared minus 10 squared. That would have been 300. That would have been the square root of 300. And then you would have had the area of that triangle is a half base times height, a half of 10 times root 300. And then the area of the whole hexagon would be not six, because that was each of them cut in half, would be 12 of these little slivery triangles. So it would be a half of 12, which is six times 10 is 60 times the square root of 300, which of course is the same answer, 1039.23 and so on. Number 12, there you go, chord in a circle, right angle triangle. First thing you do, not even reading the question, when you join the centre to the outside and the centre to the middle of the chord. 
There's my angle triangle. Now I'll read it. Now I've got the radius, radius is 1.2, centre to the outside. The width of the surface, that's this chord, is 1.8, so that's half of it, that's 0 0.9. And it wants the depth of the milk, that's the distance all the way down. Well, obviously, the first thing I'm going to do is work out that side. I'm going to call it x, and that's Pythagoras. So I've got x squared will be 1.2 squared, but that's the biggest, so it'll have to be minus the 0.9 squared. I know these anyway. That's 1.44, and that's 0 0.81. So subtracting them gives you 0 0.63, which means x itself will be the square root of 0 0.63, and I don't know that, so I'll do that. And that's 0 0.7937, and so on. So I'll just take it to the two figures. That's the nearest centimetre, I think. 0 0.79 metres. So the depth of the milk then will be, if that's 0.79, and this part here is the radius, that's 1.2, it'll be 1.2 plus that. It'll be 1.2 plus the bit above that, plus the 0.79, that's 1.99 metres. Oh, it was almost there, it was almost at 2, but it wasn't. But you don't really care if you're getting these four marks.